Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, thank you for coming to watch the video. I'm going to be recapping Celebrity Big Brother, uh, pretty much the first and, I guess, midpoint of the second week, because it's only, what, Tuesday today. They did have an eviction last night on Monday, uh, so I guess they're doing a couple evictions a week. So, I don't know how I'm going to do these videos in the future, but I'm going to basically do the first week, and I guess... Uh, up to yesterday's eviction, which technically should only be the second person evicted, but there was, I guess, a self-eviction uh, as well. So there's three people out of the house. I will get into that a little bit, my thoughts on it and everything. Uh, but we're already down three people, and the show is only a week and a half old. So it's kind of interesting, uh, and let's see what they're going to do moving forward. So I just want to thank everyone first, uh, first for coming by, checking these videos, sharing them, liking them, commenting on them. That's great. Thank you so much. I see you. I hear you thank you very very much um i do plan on doing more giveaways with big brother stuff i don't know if you can see in my background i have a whole shelf here it's all basically my big brother memorabilia i want to be giving some of it away to some some lucky fans and stuff i know what it means to you guys and all that stuff um and just a thank you for you guys for just coming by and just uh you know helping me with my stuff and i'd like to help you with some some things that you may like or something like that anyways uh I, I am liking Tom Green. I did like Tom Green before this the the show. He was my preseason pick for who I was going to be cheering for and all that stuff. But he's really getting a lot of love from the camera. So there's a there is a bandwagon behind him right now. A lot of people kind of wrote him off uh, before the season started. But as soon as they saw his kind of DRs and how he's funny and and the things he's doing, he kind of has a really good following for it now, which is great. Um, it, it's great. But I I don't know how long it's going to last. But I'll get all into that. Anyway, guys, so this is going to be the first week and I guess a couple episodes into the second week. Um, I watched them with, I watched an episode with Shannon Elizabeth last week. I, I watched them all with Evil Dick, uh, Keith from BB13, uh, last night uh, Ronnie from uh, from Big Brother. A, a lot of, every every episode I'm watching it with, with a lot of alum because uh, actually I canceled my cable so I can't even watch uh, any of the shows so they're kind of screen sharing with me and we're all watching it together which is kind of cool because I get it I get a, a different perspective I get to watch it with other past house guests or just other people and just to see how they view the game and I love that I love that you can discuss it uh, you know with people that have experience in that house and you all have different views of the game and different perspectives and different angles and different ways you would play and different moves that you see that maybe you would that you think oh it's a great move and someone else might think oh man that's a horrible move just because of their play style so there's no real right or wrong way to play the game it's how you would play is the right way for you so again I just I like how uh, we all get together and watch the shows and just to kind of compare notes see how how we see the game how we see what's going on and, and things like that anyway um i did do dick at night last night with evil dick uh keith and uh and ronnie was supposed to be on it but uh he has having problems with his baby or something so he couldn't make it um but anyway guys thank you again i will start right now and uh comment below who you're cheering for i want to know who everyone's cheering for you know i know i asked in the first video if, if you didn't see that i broke down the cast check that out um but yeah, tell me who you were originally cheering for and who you're cheering for now, what you think of the game. Uh, also, that whole Scaramucci thing. I want to hear your guys' thoughts, what you thought about it. Post that below. I'm very interested to see what other people think. I have my views on it and my beliefs on it. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Anyway, guys, that being said, let's get started. Okay, so I want to recap on something because um, I'm sure a lot of you saw what happened yesterday and this week in the show um, with who got evicted and all that. I will get into that a little bit later, but I want to start into last week a little bit. Lolo Jones offers Joey Lawrence an alliance, a big alliance. And what does Joey Lawrence say? No, I'm against alliances. I don't want any part of that. Uh, no, not for me, not a chance, no, 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 no alliance for me. Buddy, what are you doing, man? This is Big Brother. This is the first week. This is the week you need the numbers, man. This is very, 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 very important. Anybody watching this right now, if you're in week one, if you're in that house and week one, a majority alliance comes to you and wants to bring you in, just say yes. Even if you're not loyal to them, just say yes. It'll keep you safe with the majority of the house, especially early in the game. People don't want to piss off the majority of the house. When, you know, your HOH first week, and there's seven people coming up to you saying, 
this is who we should put on the block. This is who we should put on the block. This is who we should put on the block. That's seven people saying that one name. The HOH will almost feel pressured into putting that person on the block because they think, hey, the house wants this person on the block. When in reality, it's an alliance that wants that person on the block. An alliance that wants somebody that isn't in the alliance on the block and out the door. So it's a very easy tactic, especially early game. So if you're ever in that house and someone offers you in a big alliance, even if you aren't loyal to them and you have other plans in your agenda, just say yes, get the information from them. Say yes, you'd love to be in their alliance, blah, blah, blah. Use that information to your advantage. Anyway, Joey says, no, I want nothing to do with alliance. I don't even want to hear that word alliance. No, I'm anti-alliance, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair enough. Lucky for him, um, his buddy wins HOH the first week. Well, then when you fast forward now where we are today, he seems to have nobody in the house. He has no friends in the house and kind of has his back against the wall uh, simply because he doesn't have an alliance. That's the problem. You need people in that game. You cannot win the game by yourself. I know a lot of people think they can win the game by themselves. You can't. You need help along the way. So Joey saying no to this, this alliance when Lolo comes up to you and offers you this great deal on a plate and you say no, bad move my friend, bad move. And you can see this week where it's kind of got him to where he is now. Um, anyway, that was my thoughts on that. D don't like the way he played that. Not really feeling Joey Lawrence at all at this point. Nah, whatever. It is what it is. Um, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. That's just my thoughts on that situation. Okay, so on the first episode or week one, uh, they had the HOH competition where Ryan Lochte and Jonathan Bennett, I believe it is, uh, they win HOH, or will they at least win the competition? Then we find out later that they have to do a head-to-head -head battle uh, to see who the actual HOH is, and whoever loses ends up on the block. So they do have their battle. It's uh, actually it's a really cool competition, and I'm really feeling it. I'm really liking it because it's a competition you don't see, and that's what I like. I, I, I find they... They reuse a lot of different competitions, just put a different skin on it, and basically call it a new competition. I like when they come up with these new neat ideas. So basically they're on like a zip line, they have a wall of blocks, and they have to climb up a ladder, jump off this little zip line, swing into these blocks, and knock them over. I like that. I like that it's different. Uh, it seemed like it was a hard competition. You know, they were out of breath. You're climbing up this ladder. You're jumping. You're climbing. You're, you know, back and forth. And it's a race. So you're going as fast as you can. I like that. Um, it was very different. Um, anyway, so Ryan ends up winning. Uh, it was actually kind of close. For a while, it looked like Ryan was just running away with it. But uh, Jonathan kind of comes back. It's pretty close. Ryan does win. That means Jonathan ends up on the block. Ryan is your HOH for the week or for the first HOH. Let's see what his plans are now. Okay, so here's the thing, all right? Ryan Lochte made an alliance, I believe, with Candy, Tamar, uh, oh, I don't even remember anymore. There's a few of them. There's a few people he made an alliance with. So he wins HOH, and you know, his alliance comes up to him to kind of talk to him, like, okay, what are we gonna do? We're a team, we're an alliance. What are your plans? And Ryan doesn't get it. I, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. He doesn't get it. He, he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And starts kind of being shady to his own alliance. What are you doing, buddy? So now his alliance is kind of all sketched out going, well, what is this? We're supposed to be working together. Why can't you tell me what you're going to do? It just doesn't sit right. Which they're right about that. It doesn't make any sense. You know, Candy was, wasn't feeling it and Tamar wasn't feeling it. A lot of them were like, what's going on here? And they have, they have the right to do that simply because, hey, if you're working with the guy, he should be like, hey, guys, this is our plan as a team or sit down and say what do you guys think what should we do as a group what should we do as a team what's better for the team kind of thing even if he doesn't go along with it kind of make them feel like it, they're included in the plan it's part of their plan they are the ones that said hey let's put up a and B. So you got to kind of make your alliance feel at least important or included in who your nominations are. If you come up and say, this is what I'm doing, if you like it or not too bad, it doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Everyone uh, obviously has their own agendas while they're in the house, but you have to make them feel like everything you do was their plan. So they feel included, they trust you and stuff like that. For Ryan to be like, eh, I don't know what I'm going to do to his own alliance, very, very shady, not a good play. And the people that were in his alliance had a right to be kind of sketched out and pissed off by it. All right, so Ryan tells his alliance he's going to be nominating uh, Dina 
And I believe it was uh, Scaramucci or Tom, or I don't remember what it was. But Dina is who he told uh, his alliance he was going to put up. So then it comes up to the uh, nominations. And what does he do? He nominates Scaramucci and Tom Green. Dina is not, uh, not even mentioned. Now, don't forget, John Bennett, Jonathan Bennett, is on the block too, simply because he lost the uh, HOH competition. So he's automatically on the block. So your three nominees, your, your starting nominees are Jonathan Bennett, Tom Green, and Anthony Scaramucci. Now, I want to get into a few things here. Uh, Ricky Williams, non-existent. Ricky Williams is literally non-existent in this show. I legitimately keep forgetting the guy's name. I'm not a football guy, so I don't know who he is. And uh, I don't know anything about football. So I actually forget who this guy is. I forget he's on the show. You don't see the guy at all. Um, non-existent. No DRs. Not even three seconds of screen time. Screen time nothing. The guy is non-existent. Uh, I just wanted to get into that. So... Uh, Tom Green, Scaramucci get Scaramucci get nominated, and then kind of whatever the the show ends or whatever. Uh, then we kind of get into the next episode, and all of a sudden Scaramucci's gone. He's he's no longer in the house. Uh, what's going on? And then Big Brother kind of comes out and says, "Hey guys, Scaramucci was part of a twist all this time. We're gonna do a veto competition called Scaramucci's Veto." Uh, bullshit. I call complete bullshit on that. Big Brother is a business. They know what they're doing. When they have these twists, they promote them and they let everybody know. And and if we if, if Scaramucci was this uh, hidden house guest, he would have been. They would have told you that before the season starts. Episode one, they would have they would have promoted that. That would have been a center of all the promotions. Scaramucci's in there. He's a mole. He's a this. He's not a real house guest. He's in there to cause shit. Whatever it is. But there was none of that. Uh, he disappears. He leaves the house. He self evicts. And they're kind of like, okay, we have to do something now. Our hands are tied. They know they had a lot of flack last season from what two, three, four, whatever it is, house guests. Uh, self-evicting these these celebrities quitting uh, they only have four weeks to do this but they're all quitting on them they know that they can't have that happen again this year it's not a good look for them so what do they do Scaramucci uh, self-evicts they turn it into a competition Scaramucci's veto something like that is very easy to set up especially when they're just using the words he said he's a smart guy he said a, a, a few one-liners that were pretty cool all they needed was eight one-liners from him from him that's easy enough to say and uh, so they just pick eight lines that he said made a little competition about it uh, they probably have one of those presses to print all that paper there in the studio uh, so the competitions easily made Made. It takes two seconds. It's not a, a big, heavy competition. It's just a few walls with, with some newspapers on it, uh, big stickers on it. No big deal. So they kind of try to cover their ass, but we're not fooled. I'm not fooled. I, you know, there, there was no promo about it whatsoever. It's just kind of like, where's Scaramucci? Oh, he's gone. He pops up on the screen. Hey, guys, I'm a twist. Nah, that's not how it is. So Scaramucci self evicts, which is actually a shame. Uh, I was really starting to like his character um, the, last, the last episode he was in. He's really, really, really good with his words. I just like the way he talks. He's a smooth talker. I like that. Uh, it's a shame that he went out like that. I don't think he liked the fact that he was on the block. I think he kind of, you know, was maybe a burn to his ego a little bit. Maybe. I'm not sure. But he for sure had to self-evict. There's no way Big Brother would just kind of let him leave and then just say, Oh, by the way, he was a twist. Uh, surprise, we didn't tell anybody. No, that's not how it works. Um, and a perfect example is if you're caught up on the on the, the season as of yesterday's show, they threw in a new twist into the house uh, about the voting and all that stuff. They let the viewers know before it happens. It's not something like, it's just like, oh, by the way, boom, here's a twist, here you go. It doesn't work that way. So they let the viewers know, hey, there's going to be a vote. Get ready to vote. Vote for whatever, um, which obviously none of this happened um, about the Scaramucci thing. Nothing like that. So... Uh, it's a shame that he did uh, self-evict. I believe he self-evicted. Self I'm not, you know, it's not set in stone. But I, I truly believe he self-evicted. And it's a shame because I think he, he brought a lot to the table. Uh, he did start talking about politics a little bit. I said it in my last video. Once he starts talking about politics, have a seat, guys. Pull out your popcorn. Uh, they're going to focus on that. They love hearing that. They love hearing the trash talk about the president, uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff in the White House. Uh, they love, love, love that stuff. They're eating it up. It's good for the viewers. The viewers want to hear it. The show wants them to talk about it. So um, 
Uh, anyway, he, t- he did a little segment about that. It was a couple minutes long. He talked about the president. You know, it's funny. Tom Green starts talking about how they have a lot in common. They were both fired by the president because, you know, uh, Tom Green was on The Apprentice uh, where Donald Trump was the, uh, the host and all that stuff. And he fired Tom Green, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, so I, I think the dynamic between Tom and, uh, and Scaramucci would have been great. I think they were getting along well. And I think it would have been great moving forward. It's a shame he self-evicted, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so now about the veto competition, um, it goes underway and uh, you see Tom Green and Cato talking, you know, uh, and they're trying to make a final two and all this stuff. And Tom basically says, listen, you know, um, I, I think I can trust you, but I won't fully trust you until that necklace is around my neck and you show me, you know, and it's one thing I've said and season three, I said on season five, actions are cheap or sorry, talk is cheap, actions speak. That's the way it is. Anybody can say, hey, if you're on the block, I'll save you. That's cheap. It's cheap talk. It, it, you're not proving anything. It's just words. But as soon as someone is in danger and they're on the block and you take that, that necklace off and you put it around their neck, that's actions and that speaks. Anybody can say they'll do it, but until it's actually done, you don't know if it's true or not. So Tom, you know, Tom's right. He says, listen, okay, I like this final two. I trust you, but I won't truly trust you unless you put that necklace around my neck. So I like that a lot. It's, it's talk is cheap. Actions speak. I truly believe that. Um, and I've, I've said that saying a lot in the house too. Uh, let me prove with my actions, not just my words. Um, and it goes a lot further that way. So anyway, they do have the veto competition. Cato does win, and he does use the veto on Tom Green. Takes him off the block, uh, which is great. I thought that was fantastic. I really like that pair. Uh, I'm really liking the Cato-Tom thing. You know, I'm obviously cheering for Tom, my Ottawa boy. What's up, Ottawa? Um, and I've, I've been, I've been, you know cheering for him since I found out he was even on the cast before episode one and all that stuff. Really, really, really like Tom Green. I really like that pair. So uh, I believe Candy goes up as a replacement. So um, I believe it was Candy. So it's Candy, uh, Jonathan Bennett, and I don't even remember. Joey, I believe it is, is the third one. Anyway, whatever it is. I don't remember who was on the block. Whatever it is, it uh, doesn't really matter. So, um, so anyway, Cato saves Tom Green. Uh, Tom Green can now trust them. Their bond is going to grow. And let's see what happens from there. So I actually want to say something here. So because Kato uses the veto, um, Ryan now has to nominate another person. So, so far this week, Johnny, Candy, Tom, Scaramucci, and Joey. Those are the five people that have seen the block this week alone. This is week one. And five people have seen the block. Guys, there's 12 people on this season. 12 people. And five of them have been on the block in this first week. <coughs> so, you know, poor guy. Listen, you know, I wasn't really cheering for Ryan at all. Wasn't feeling him at all. But poor guy, man. The, you know, the guy wins HOH week one. He has to make the first strike on somebody. He has to piss off somebody and possibly even a whole side of the house just from being HOH on week one. But the poor guy has to now nominate five different people just through all the events and everything. Five people he has nominated out of 12 and he is one of them. So that's six people that, you know, involved and six people that haven't been nominated out of, out of 12. That's crazy. For week one, that is crazy crazy so uh he's now pissed off a whole bunch of people and he's soon gonna be you know he's not gonna be hoh you know in a couple of days and he's just pissed off you know four people out of the five that have been nominated will be safe so that's a lot of people coming for you and it's an easy out for them if if any one of them win hoh is a very easy out for them to say hey listen sorry buddy you just nominated me i gotta get you back no hard feelings it's just the way it goes and it kind of sucks for him again i'm not really cheering for the guy but it just i feel for the guy because that, that's kind of, it's kind of shitty. He's in a shitty uh, situation uh, just by that alone. But anyway, so five people seen the block. Ryan had nominated five people this week. Um, and he's got his hands full uh, in the next HOH or at least the next week coming. So now we come down to the eviction. Uh, it ends up being a six to one vote. Jonathan Bennett is the first one evicted from the Big Brother house. Technically the second house guest to leave because Scaramucci left before him. Um, so Jonathan Bennett goes out with a vote of six to one. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, it was a blind side to Ryan. Ryan didn't obviously didn't want to see his buddy go home. That was the guy he was trying to work with, the guy he trusted. Uh, he didn't want to see him go home. And I'll tell you something. Now, I've never been in that situation where 
Um, you know, when I was HOH, my friend went home, but I could just imagine how crappy that feels, man. Uh, when your own friend goes home on your HOH, uh, that's got to be one of the worst feelings. I know on season three, it happened to Zach Olenek. You know, he put up JP as a pawn, went home, and it crushed Zach. He felt so bad about it. Uh, I could just imagine, I could just imagine your HOH, your friend goes home. And not only that, like I just said, he nominated four other people in the house that week. And the one person that goes home isn't even one of those four people. It's the one person he trusts in that house is the one that goes home. So there's four other people in the house that are pissed off and that really have no love for him now. Kind of sucks for him. But hey, that's Big Brother. That's the way it goes. You got to make sure when you make your uh, nominations that you're going to get the way you want. You're going to, the person that wants to go, that you want to go out is going to go out. You have to make sure uh, that's part of the game. I don't know if it's just because he he's not aware of the game itself that maybe that's what, uh, you know, that, that outdid him. Or just the simple fact that people are like, hey, Jonathan's on the block, guys. Uh, let's just get him out. Who cares who's sitting beside him? It's his buddy. Doesn't even matter. Uh, he has no chance of who he wants out. We're just going to get out his buddy anyway. Who knows? Um, that's that. Uh, kind of sucks for Ryan, but hey, hey man, that's the business. So Joey just leaves the house, and now we're going to go to the HOH competition. It's this rock and roll theme. Um, it's an endurance comp. It was actually shown live on the feeds. I didn't watch it myself. Um, I believe I was doing uh, Evil Dick's podcast when that competition was going on, I believe. I don't remember. But anyway, I, I did not watch this competition. Um, so it's an endurance comp and basically they have to hold their hands up. It's this big rock and roll thing. Uh, the wall tilts back and forth. Uh, it's a lot harder than it looks guys. I know on TV, it's like, oh, just, you, all you gotta do is just stand there. It's easy. No, it's not. Even just sit here with this video and try to just keep your arms up like this, uh, for the remainder of this video, not going to happen. It's very hard. It starts burning. Uh, but that's not even the only thing. You have the wall, uh, you have things getting thrown in your face at condiments and stuff, ketchup and, and whipped cream and rocks and beer. I don't know what it was, whatever it was, was getting dumped on them. There's more to it. Uh, it's slippery, blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, I really like these, th this competition that it's not something new. They do a lot of these, uh, you know, throughout all the seasons and stuff. But anyway, um, so they do the competition. Tom is the first to drop. Uh, Candy is the second to drop then Ricky and a few others. Now, and usually in competitions like this, when you're the first or second to drop, you do become the target for the HOH. It's just the easy out. Um, you know, when the HOH wins, it's just the, the easiest so they don't get blood on their hands. And sorry, you were just the first two to drop. You're going on the block. I kind of don't like that um, unless it is your target. If that's the person you are targeting, it's just the easy excuse, the easy answer <coughs> uh, to put them on the block. Um, but then we get down to, uh, I believe it was Natalie and Kato, Natalie, Eva Marie and Kato. And Kato says, listen, I want this HOH. And I was like, and Natalie doesn't want it. She's smart. She knows. And I had the exact, exact, exact same strategy when I played is as long as I'm safe this week and the person that's going to win is going to go after someone that either benefits my game or doesn't hurt my game. I will give it to them. Let them win. Take someone out. Everyone's got to go eventually. As long as it doesn't hurt my game. I'm okay with that because not only will it be someone that I need out of the house, but the next week I can still play in the HOH and if I need to win, I will win. Or if I'm in the situation again where I'm with someone, you know, at the end and it's like, well, if they win, they're going to take out someone else again. I'll let them win and I can keep playing week after week uh, until I need to win. So she had the right mindset. That was exactly my strategy. Both times I played is as long as someone wins that I'm okay with, I'll let them win. So she gives it to Kato. Uh, which obviously means Tom is safe. He was the first to drop. It means Tom is safe because they're working very, very close together. Loving that combination. Uh, Natalie's safe. He struck a deal, which means Lolo's safe. They're working together. There's a lot of, uh, webs going on with alliances and stuff like that. Uh, which actually they end up, uh, making a four man alliance or four person alliance. I should say, uh, it was Tom Green, uh, Kato, uh, Natalie and Lolo, which I love that alliance. I absolutely love because those are actually the four people in the house that I am enjoying the most. I, that's the four people I am cheering for out of anybody that's in there. And the fact that they're working together, I love that. And if you actually kind of break it down for each person, they all have different strengths that kind of really benefit each other. Uh, you know, you have the athletes and, 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 and the thinkers, the mental comps, and you have that mix, which is great. Uh, I really, really, really like that. Um, so Kato does win. Uh, they're in the backyard. The four of them end up in the backyard. They're all talking to each other about, you know, their targets and this and that. Um, and Kato mentions how he really wants to backdoor, uh, Ryan. So eventually at first he puts up Dina and I don't know who it was. It was Candy. I don't remember, but he told him, listen guys, or it was, um, 
It was Tamar. And he says, you know, uh, don't worry, guys. You're not my target, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when really he wanted to target Ryan. Now, I said before, Ryan... Uh, made a lot of enemies week one by just nominating all these people. He's considered a big threat. He's an athlete. He's an Olympian. He's a gold medalist, whatever time's over. Uh, the guy's, he's an animal. And he's very vulnerable in the second week simply because he cannot play and all that stuff. So they come up with this plan to backdoor him. He kind of hears in the, in the, in the, you know, the door wasn't uh, closed when they're talking in the backyard. And he kind of sticks his head out. Ryan sticks his head out and goes, oh, hey, guys, what's going on here? Um, then it kind of cuts to the diary room say, where Ryan's like, oh, I know they're trying to backdoor me. Now, here's the thing, guys okay the way the show puts it together it all makes sense like okay they're talking about him then ryan's in the diary room going, oh i know you're coming after me and then they cut back to this and that that diary room session could have been uh, a day later it could have been two days later it could have been two days before that kind of thing you know what i mean it's just the way they edit it they piece it together another thing i want to say in the diary room if you're smart enough and you pick up on things they kind of give you answers not on purpose. They're not trying to give you the answers. They're just trying to do their job and they have a story to tell. So they could be saying things to like Ryan and Darren, like, do you feel safe? Do you think you're the backdoor option? Uh, what's your relationship with Cato? Do you, like, do you think he'll backdoor you kind of thing? And they're not trying to give them the answer, but they need those answers for the show. It's a business. It's a show. They got a story to tell. So if you're smart enough and you're sitting that diary going, well, why are they asking me that? Why I shouldn't be a backdoor option, you know, and then it gets you thinking like, oh, okay, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to backdoor me. And there's your DR session. There's your, that's his cue. Oh, I know you're trying to backdoor me. And a lot of people don't pick up on this, but I definitely picked it up playing was you got to pay attention to the DR. The DR is a separate game on its own on a couple different levels. If you want to be an entertainer, you're going to get a lot of DR time. If you're a game player um, and they're going to ask you these kind of questions, pick up on it because they're giving you those answers, just not even on purpose. They're just trying to do their job. Remember, these people that are in the diary room asking you those questions, they're not in the game. They're not game players. They're TV people. They're editors for TV shows or whatever they do, camera, whatever the hell it is, they have no business in the game. They don't understand the game. They understand the show. So again, they're not trying to give you the answer, but accidentally they can. So you see Ryan saying things like, oh, I know you're trying to backdoor me. Uh, uh, uh. Um, and that kind of stuff. So then we get to a live veto. Um, and here, this is kind of interesting because the veto they do, it's a, it's one of those crap shoot ones. It's one of those, uh, it's, it's, it's all based on luck. You roll a ball. I mean, there's a little bit of strategy, sure, but not really. So there's a little ball and they got to roll it. It lands in a number. The highest number wins. Very basic, uh, veto. This happens tons and tons of times. Uh, nothing crazy. But the fun, the, the weird thing is is this is usually a competition they do. It's usually an HOH competition. And not only that, it's usually one they do for like a double. One that they do live on TV, they need it to end fast. Uh, you know, kind of, they have their moment, they have their HOH, you go in, you do your noms, you go out and do a veto. Uh, and then, you know, blah, 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 live eviction, double. You know how it works. So it was really, it was really weird to see that they did that for a veto. And I, I don't like crap shoots for a veto. I don't like those because someone's game is on the line and, it, and you know where it's like make them stand there for eight hours if they really want to stay in this house they're going to stand on that that ledge or they're going to hold that rock or they're going to do whatever the hell they got to do for 10 hours or they got to go through this obstacle course they're going to go so fast they're going to fight for their life let those ones be the vetoes hohs whatever let them be crap shoots because you got to give everyone a chance everyone has to have a chance to win an hoh if you just have them all physical competitions well obviously the physical people are going to beat the you know the not so physical people or the whatever you want to call it it's just that's just the way it is that's just that's just life so leave those ones for hoh competitions and the vetoes let it be for people that need to save their life how bad do they really want it will they bleed for it will they sweat for it or will they give up let those be the veto competitions so i was really i was really surprised that that was a veto competition pure crap shoot uh tom green and tamar tied the first ball they had to re reshoot it and tom wins tom wins the veto uh, takes off whoever it was, and Ryan goes on the block, Ryan gets voted out, it, which is a shame because I wasn't cheering for him whatsoever in the first week. But the last couple episodes, it kind of, I don't know, he kind of grew on me a little bit. Um, you know, not he's not a great player or anything like that, but just, I don't know, something about him is just very personable. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I was kind of liking it. I don't know if I just felt bad for the guy because, you know, I knew his back was against the wall, but... Um, 
I was definitely not cheering for him, but I definitely, uh, was, he was starting to grow on me a little bit, for sure. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, Ryan gets voted out. I believe it was uh, not unanimously. There was one vote. Uh, Dina voted for whoever, but whatever, doesn't matter. Um, so Ryan is your third uh, house guest evicted. We're down to nine people. And then Big Brother comes out and talks about this new twist. Uh, I hate these twists. I hate any kind of twist. Um, so basically, America can vote to save someone for the next two weeks. Uh, two evictions, maybe two weeks, two evictions, I don't know what it is, but whatever. Anyway, this is such a com condensed uh, season. <coughs> it's, it's down, there's only, what, four weeks of it. Why are you doing this? Why are you making someone safe for two weeks? I, I don't understand the point of this. Let them play. You know, let them play. It's not like there's crazy gameplay going on anyway. Just let them play, do their thing. Uh, you know, these, these twists are so unnecessary, especially in like a celebrity condensed season. Just let whatever happens, happens. I mean, it's a good season. There's entertainment. There's a little bit of strategy going on, alliances and drama and fights. And uh, what else can you ask for? So the fact that they put in this twist, eh, kind of whatever. Not really feeling it. I, I personally hate twists, period. But I get that they have to do it. I understand that. It's a show. It's a business. I understand they need them. I just felt like they didn't need it uh, in this season, per se. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's 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 the recap, and they have this 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 vote going on now. It's just keep someone safe for two evictions, which is kind of crazy, uh, kind of nonsense, and um, that's that. So guys, thank you for watching the video. Uh, please hit that that like button. Leave a comment. Who you're cheering for? What do you think of the twist? What do you think of Scaramucci uh, leaving the house? Uh, things like that. I'm very very curious onto what your guys' thoughts are. Um, who would you vote for if? you voted or maybe you did vote who did you vote for i'm just very curious to see how it goes i know a lot of people are behind tom green right now i think tom is uh i mean i don't know what the americans think of him i know the canadians love him i i, I believe he's gonna win the vote maybe he does maybe he doesn't i don't know uh but anyway let me know uh don't forget to hit that sub uh, sub button guys thank you very very much for watching i really enjoy doing these videos i hope you enjoy listening and, uh, you know, I will be back soon. There's a lot of episodes getting fired out. Bang, 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 bang. So I'm going to have to be stepping up and do these videos quick. I know I kind of rushed through this one a little bit, but there was just so much going on. I just wanted to get it out. And I believe there's another episode tomorrow. Uh, I just, I, I, you know, it's keeping me busy. Let's just say it's keeping me busy. So that's that. Guys, have a great one. Take it easy. Peace.